Welcome everyone to Hidden Squids Gaming. Today we're going to play Long Live the Queen. Achievements we're going to get is Long Live the Queen, Be Crowned the Queen, Illuminate, Transform into a Lumen, No Other Rulers Before Me, Make a Foreign Duke Your Subject, There and Back Again, Survive the Old Forest, and Make It Look Like an Accident, Order Assassins. My audio went out for some reason, so this is going to be, the audio is going to be recorded over the actual gameplay, so if things seem a little off, that's why. Let's get started. I'm not going to read everything word for word, it would make this video longer. If you want me to read word for word in the future, please let me know, because I'm going to be doing future gameplays. So he's saying that your mother just died, and that he needs to get the best tutors possible for you in every subject. Because he's pulling you out of school, and you need to survive until your 15th birthday, since you are currently 14 years old. This is your father, he's currently the king, and once you hit 15, you will be the queen of Nova. And you are his daughter, Lodi, age 14. So the lady's saying, this isn't what my mother wanted. However, you know, she doesn't really get a choice, and the father is trying to move on, dealing with his wife's death, and with his daughter rebelling against him in a way. It is true, all the decisions later in the game are made up to you. We have played this game before, so I'm going to say I've played this before. There's skills, moods, outfits, and classes. Skills here, you can see all the minus ones, the plus ones, the plus zeros. How you feel will affect these moves, and I will occasionally come back here to check them out throughout the playthrough. There's mood, and we are currently depressed because it moves from left to right, and it will take the lowest or the highest in that area. Currently depressed is minus four, and the next highest be negative two and afraid. So we will stay depressed for a little bit. Outfit, we currently only have the boarding school outfit, but as we get into 50s and 25s and other skills, we'll unlock new outfits. And finally, there's classes, and we're going to start with economics, and we're going to do both for accounting for week one. As you get like 10, 20s, and 30s, you'll get like these like little pieces of information. Some are useful, some aren't, some are more flavor, but once you get into lore, like in internal affairs, there's actually good things to read. So there's noise outside. It's your cousin's aunt and uncle. This is Lucille. This would be your mother's sister. And honestly, that's Laurent. That'd be the uncle. So, Sister Fidelia, Queen of Nova, wife Lucille, Charlotte. Charlotte is their daughter that is currently here you'll have most interactions with. Emery and Zara are two other of their children, but you don't really ever make reference to them. There's Charlotte, she's currently the oldest at age 13. Lodi's pretty happy that she actually has someone to talk to, so we're going to give plus one cheerful to that depressed. And as an activity, we are going to sneak out. Currently our mood's still depressed because Willful's at only two, Afraid's at only two, and Depressed is still three. So once Willful, we're afraid, get better than Depressed, our mood will change. As of now, we'll stick with accounting. We want to get that to 50 as fast as possible so we can get into the Royal Treasury. As you can see, as we hit 30s and 40s, we get a new flavor text. So now there's more commotion outside again. This is Juliana, Duchess of Ursel. As you can tell, the king is already not so happy with her, and there's more backstory to that. Elodie had no idea, so she is a Lumen, which is like a magic caster in this game. And she is here to protect the kingdom, so she wants you, which she'll say eventually is to become a Lumen yourself, because your mother was. 
Jocelyn has nothing to do with this. He says that there have been traitors over the past hundred years. His wife died to magic. It's not really a great time for Jocelyn. We want to go with magic, so we got to let her stay. We're not going to arrest her. We're not going to send her away. Jocelyn Osley has no choice in that. We're going to visit Juliana. You have a bunch of other options here, which we can do later, but for now we're going to visit her. She's asking about your mother's crystal. Obviously, we're going to fail that lore test. We didn't even know what lumens really were, so obviously we're not going to know what our mother's crystal was. Now she's asking for her crystal, and she shows it. Not many points in the game, but a couple of times there'll be like an actual, I'll call them interactive, but there'll be a, a different things that pop up on the screen, and this is one of those times. So this is Juliana's crystal. So we touch it and it dissolves away into nothing. And this demonstrates that no one can have a crystal until they die. So to get our mother's crystal, she had to die for us to get it, where another Lumen had to die, and we take their crystal. So our classes are now going to go into trade and production because once we got accounting to 50 we would need trade and production to at least get to 25 each for accounting to continue above 50. So it is very important that we get production and logistics up. And also production and logistics are somewhat important. important. You do realize where certain products flow through which is important for later parts of the game. So Charlotte's playing He Loves Me, He Loves Me Not with a flower. So she likes playing with flowers, not a boyfriend. She's only 13. Most people don't. So suddenly Duchess of Ursul, or Juliana, comes into the garden and points a sword at your feet. She tells us not to move. We're going to hold still. However, we don't have the composure to actually not peek slash not move. So we look down at the sword... There's a snake in the grass. We currently don't know what snake it is, but the snake's about to strike. So Charlotte, our cousin, pushes us out of the way, and the snake's fangs sink into her leg. So obviously, Lodi's scared. Juliana cuts off the snake's head. Lucille, who's the mother of Charlotte, who is the girl that just got bit, asking what's going on. And we now know it's a milk viper, and they're very poisonous, so we need to get her to an herbalist. However, this is interesting. Lucille says, I will treat my daughter. I certainly can't trust anyone here to keep her safe. This is essentially her family, so it's very weird in the language that she's using here. Elodi has no idea what's going on. Charlotte's not feeling well because the snake is very poisonous. So they'll be returning to their home immediately. And Juliana's saying, wait a second, milk vipers aren't native to this area. That means somebody may have brought it here and attempted on your life. As she says, someone may have tried to kill you. And she just doesn't care. She's like, will Charlotte be okay? She's completely ignoring the fact that there may have already been an assassination on her life within the first two to three weeks. For this weekend, we're going to talk to our father, because he would obviously know where Mother's Luminous Crystal is, which she asked immediately. And he's like, it's in a safe place. Very cut, very dry. Can I have it? No. I love that. Just no. Like, no, no, no explanation for it, no nothing. No. Oh, but it's mine. Even better. As you can tell, he kind of has PTSD with magic. Uh, magic's what's killed his wife, so he doesn't... Yeah, meddling with magic killed your mother. I don't want that to happen to you. Once you're queen, he's saying, go ahead, go do it. Go learn all the magic you want. But for now, he will not tell you how to get it or where to get it. So we are currently willful. Willful has hit four. Afraid's negative three. Depressed is negative three. And lonely is negative one. We're going to take a short break from all of our economics to get intrigue for internal affairs. It is important to get the skills necessary throughout the weeks. We can't become fixated. And we also have a nice willful bonus right now. 
which gets us 15 for the first couple of weeks, which is amazing. The standard is 10, so the fact that we can get 30 instead of 20 is a huge boost. So right here is saying, until you have children of your own, your maternal uncle from the Duke of Merva, which is people that are just here, is next in line for the crown. So that's saying that Laurent and Lucille, who are just here, have invested interest in you and your safety because they would then be next in line to rule Nova. This is important to keep track of. So there's some more information you get to further into about the Duke of Merva and the Duke of Mead and all that. And the Duke of Ursals. These all become eventually important. So I would definitely read internal affairs and lores. They often are important to the story. So Elodie's saying the castle is quieter. Well, Charlotte and Emery and Zara and their parents gone, so that's all five people that were just here. So she's noticing that she's getting more servants by the day, probably because she's getting trainers. And she's mentioning about Charlotte and that she hopes she's going to be okay. We're going to visit Juliana because our father has denied us access. So Juliana is correct, there may not be time to wait, a lot of happens in 40 weeks. It is filled with many dangers and magic will help us in many of those dangers. Good guess by Juliana, she's saying it's probably in the Royal Treasury, which it is. Uh, do not let her take drastic action, she... I believe she blows up a couple of your guards and that is not good for the kingdom and the opinion of Lumens. We're going to find a peaceful way to get in there. So we're not going to wait till you're older because that means you won't be able to do the crystal. We don't want Juliana to blow someone up, so we're not going to do drastic action. We will find another way in. Week 5, we're going to go into agility reflexes because we need this for a certain event coming up. So once again, we're willful, we got plus 17, we're almost at 50 internal affairs and only three classes worth, which is amazing. So once again, the reflexes one is more flavor text than actual useful. So our maid approaches us, she says that the Duke of Sidna, obviously we don't have, we don't know anything about foreign affairs or foreign intelligence. We don't know anything outside of our own castle, pretty much. So we look pretty bad in the commoner's eyes right now. There's a beautiful necklace in there. Failed court manners. That's because this necklace means something else other than just to look beautiful on our neck. Obviously, Lodi doesn't know that because she has absolutely zero court manners. So we're going to attend court. Our mood is currently afraid. We are going to go back to our economics. We're going to do trade and production, so these can hit 25. We're at 26.24 in trade, which is good. And we're at 26.24 in production, which is good, which means we now have unlocked a new outfit. Because once you hit 325s in a certain category, you get a new outfit, which adds 10 to everyone in that category, which you'll see soon. Walking through our garden, so we see Juliana, and she's talking to a woman. So honestly, we just think she looks busy, and we turn, we don't want to disturb them. It looks like someone's getting over a hedge, so it's a servant, a thief, we're going to call the guards, we're not going to run and hide, we're not going to climb, we do not have climbing. Climb the over the edge does climbing over the hedge does open up a cool path though. So we call the guards. But by the time they uh, respond, the person's already gone, which is kind of scary because these people are in charge of saving our life and they were slow to respond to the situation. So not the best. We're gonna attend court. go to our outfit we're gonna put on the tuxedo there you go this will add 10 to trade accounting and logistics 
However, we need one more in accounting. We're going to go away from that now because we, we only need it up to 60 for the one event. And we're going to go into archery because we're going to do this way down the game. Right now, archery is not really going to help us. But later in the last third, it will. So we now have 67 in counting technically because of our outfit on. So we're walking the stairs. This is where we needed our reflexes because it's holding a pile of linen. We don't have elegance, but do we have reflexes and we let her pass. That seems like an absolute useless week. However, the interaction you get if you fail both does open up into a path of cruelty. And cruelty is somewhat a hidden game mechanic, I'll call it. The more cruel you are, it unlocks future dialogue options. And the achievement to serve evil, you need to have a cruelty of 10 plus to do it. I will be putting that video out in about a week or two to show that ending. It's really cool. However, you have to be really cruel to do it. And that is one of the first situations where you can get some cruelty. So the fact that we have reflexes, we avoided a potential chance to get some more dialogue and some cruelty. So it's really not a useless week that we can go very different and have significant impact later in the game. As of now, we're going to be good and we're going to visit the treasury. So we go up to the guards, which I don't know why we can't say, hey, we're going to be queen, let us in. But we flattered them with our accounting abilities. But we find the box with the crystal in it, we slip it into her pocket, we'll visit Juliana next week so we can talk to her about it. And our classes are going to be archery, and they're also going to be archery again. Like I said, we need to get archery way up there really quickly because it's going to save our butt later in the game. And right now is the best time to do it. The uh, flavor text, once again, is just learning to cut and fletch arrows. Nothing really too important. So we have a man wishing to fund his project. Treasury is not unlimited. Your money in this game, obviously, not unlimited, or the game would be easy. So he says, I want to print, I want to print books with metal letters and stuff, and only for 875 last eye. That's really cheap. So he, he, he's pretty much a printing press. He wants to make books around the world so commoners and nobles can have many books and that the nobles no longer just hold all the power. This is important. We're going to invest because this really helps us later in the game. We're going to visit Juliana. Say, I got it. So we're going to get our first achievement here. We are going to illuminate and we will do it. Nice little animation here. So that's our first achieve achievement, as I said, illuminate, transform into illumine. There will be a couple more coming up. We can now start learning our lumen powers. However, we're not going to go into those right away. They are not completely needed. We will do a strong magic build later in the game. For now, we'll keep learning archery. And we're only going to learn seven here on archery. Don't think of that as a failed week. We do need this at 50. And as I said before, now is the best time to do it. So rather than waiting until later until it's too late, we need to get it now. This is Banyan. We're going to have a decent conversation with Banyan about the next week here. He has a situation that we need to take care of. His sister is Bryn, who will also be out there. And he unsuccessfully romanced Juliana. This is important because you'll learn a... I guess it's a pretty secretive fact about Juliana later in the game, and that would explain why he failed his romance with her. Banyan, he's kind of a cool dude if you do his situation right. He's really not a butthole. Uh, so he's saying that, hey, this occupation of the county has gone on too far. It's our time to push back. Once again, we know nothing about the situation. We know nothing about military, so we're not going to solve this via fighting. So we will have to find a peaceful way to do it. And it's usually the best way to do this, in my opinion. If you do a military build, it's not bad. As long as we can get Banyan's counting back. He asks us about our necklace. We say it's from the Duke of Sidna. So he says, oh, you've made arrangements with him. Lodi has no idea that this still means marriage. But he says, the man wishes to gain your hand in marriage.
And, uh, Lodi here is not really gonna... What irritates me about Lodi is that she still doesn't take the necklace off. She says, oh, I didn't realize. And then she doesn't take it off. She's like, oh, he's gonna come for my hand in marriage, but I'm not gonna take it off. So we're gonna visit your mother's tome. The flavor text in this game for each area you do on the weekend doesn't really change. The classes we're gonna do are gonna be reflexes and reflexes. Our current mood is afraid, so we'll get a bonus, as you can see here. 1.1 1, 1 .1 for the bonus and reflexes, so we should get about like 25 for these two weeks, for these two classes. Okay, a little more than 25, we're gonna get about 30 here, which is really nice. So we're already at 42 in reflexes. And we can now play sports, which we will need to do once or twice throughout the game. We are now going to go into the diplomatic talks, and uh, Lexion does not does not want to give this county up without a prize. So we are finally going to meet his sister. This is Bryn. She uh, she has a pretty blatant character sheet. Prefers the company of woman, women, brothers, Banyan. Age thirty three. There is a sidestep to possibly romance Bryn, which is a little creepy because you're 14, she's 33. I guess by the time you hit this, you're 15, whatever. However, so the diplomat's saying, let bygones be bygones. He doesn't, he doesn't want to do war. He says, we can be good neighbors again without any lives being lost. So he's trying to get the best possible situation from us because they don't want war, but they know they have something valuable. They're going to do their best to get it from us. We're not going to bluff intimidate. We don't have any presence. We don't have anything to actually do that. So we're going to try making an offer. 8,000 gold last eye is ridiculous. And that's more than all Marie pays in taxes in a year. So if we didn't have accounting, we would have pretty much got wiped of all of our savings, which is why we do it. So now we're going to make a counter offer. So we're going to offer 4,000 last side because even Elodie says that is more than generous and the diplomat says thank you for your generosity. Both parties win. The one side's happy. We don't have to pay too much. Banyan and Bryn are going to be happy because we got their county back via non-bloodshed and without us making it look like a weak country essentially. We stood our ground in the argument. We made a counteroffer and our counteroffer was accepted. We're going to go to our mother's tomb. We're going to do dance and reflexes. Once again, maxing out reflexes at 50. We need it. It's not a huge waste, trust me. Sometimes in this build, we're just going to hit 50 in certain areas, only gain like 7 points. Reports that a Keithong has been sighted leaving the old forest. What's a Keithong, Elodie asks. A beast of an enormous golden cat, a sharp beak, and spikes on its back. Sounds pretty cool. Eek. And that's what Elodie does. Several disappearances in southern Kalaris have already been spotted. So Elodie asks, what should we do? And Jocelyn pretty much says, let's just hope it never comes out of the forest and eats another person. That's literally his policy. Well, the traditional policy. It's very laissez-faire. He's saying hunters are no match. We, we just can't do it. And yeah, we do. We do, Lodi. We just let it eat people. And Jocelyn's famous line, everyone dies in the end. Yeah, nothing like getting depressed from your father, huh? So now we have a letter. It's from Talaris to Duke of Sidna, who is the dude who gave us the necklace. We'll be arriving next week for an official visit. Which means we're going to have an awkward conversation with him. We're going to play with toys. Our classes are going to be takes me a little bit to find it. There we go. Lore and dance. Since we are afraid, we still get more in dance, which is 36 now. It's very nice, and we get a nice bonus to afraid. So that was a good week for lore and dance via our skill set. Only a Lumen can channel magic and only the help of an attuned crystal. The ability to control crystals seems to be inherited, so crystals can be passed from a parent to child. 
upon Luma's death. Very important. This is Tolaris, the Duke of Sidna. He's 26, single. So not as bad as an age difference. 15 to 26 is what you'll be looking at if you were to marry. We're not going to. But if we were, that's what the age difference would be. This conversation gets kind of fun once you get court manners. And I will do a build where you do that, but as of now, you will just be laying the compliments on us. A jewel for a jewel, but you are the more precious. So he wants to marry us so he, we can bring stability for both of our peoples. And Elodi still doesn't understand that this guy really wants to marry her. We will have to politely decline for this playthrough. You can accept his offer and other ones. And you have absolutely no court manners, so you just scream at him that you're only 14. Which is honestly a pretty good reason not to marry, I would say. But back in those times, maybe not. I regret the misunderstanding. I don't know if it was so much on his end. Elodie was warned by Banyan that what the necklace meant, and she kept it on. So I think it's mostly Elodie's fault for her ignorance. She, I wish there was an option to take off the necklace. However, we have to live with the mistakes we make. So we are fully afraid, fully depressed, but we need to stay there for the current classes we are taking. We're not going to stay, we're just going to bump up lore. Lore is very useful for getting information in this game. So the kings and queens of Nova have been lumens for years, is what that one said. And that a Lumen raised a great flood to drown invaders. Lumens have extreme power in this game. We are asking to stand judgment for a woman who's been convicted of attempted Merle murder. Kevin Earl of Io. I'm going to be honest, I do not like this man. I think he's a jerk. He is hot-headed. And most of your interactions you have with, that I've had with him, often don't end well. So he's saying this woman admits to trying to poison his sister under her own roof. That's, a, that's an issue. And she's asking which sister, so the Duchess of Mead. We ask if she's alright and she's unharmed. So the culprit was caught trying to poison the stew in the kitchen. We're now talking to the lady. So she's mentioning that them devils killed me brother and broke me mom's heart. There's a story behind this woman that we don't know yet. So she waited 10 years for a chance to get back. Kevin just wants her to die. However, we got a partial success in Eternal Affairs, which means we can ask about the story of her. And we're going to do that now. So we're asking, did the old Duke kill her family? And Kevin is very off put. He's saying, are you accusing my family of murder? Galois is asking what happened. And he calls you a wet-bottomed child who sits on the throne. What a huge insult to the future queen. Elodie does not know how to handle that. Without warning, the Earl of Io draws a dagger and slices the convict's throat. He just became the... He just executed his own prisoner in front of us. That is... Wildly... I guess I'd call it unprofessional. And he's so hot-headed that he... Disobeys, disrespects what is going to be the current queen of Nova. This is not uncommon for Kevin. Kevin has many other things that he'll do throughout the game, and we just gotta deal with them. There are some other playthroughs where you can do some funny things to him, but it's not gonna happen in this one. I accidentally skipped a week 14, so I pulled it from another playthrough. Ignore the Falcon success, it shouldn't be there. This week consisted of a divination failure, a Falcon failure, and we also had a woman come by offering to open up a hospital. However, we don't have the skills for that either. So Elodi says, what? We're going to put all the sick people together and uh, wouldn't that make them die faster? So that's all that happens. It doesn't affect the story too much. At the end of the week, play sports. And this is the only air made throughout the whole game. Thank you. We're going to do a quick save here. We're going to name it Assassins. You get eight save slots, I would recommend doing it occasionally just to 
anchor your position. We're going to cont continue our meditation and divination from last week. This is week 14 and week f this is week 15 and week 14 we also did divination and meditation. Now we've unlocked a new outfit which I will check out in the second part of this video. So the festival of the good ladies approaching. This is a public celebration followed by the grand gala, the grand ball. So we're going to be dancing and meeting with nobles. During the pr during the festival, we can parade, we can speech, or we cannot attend. That's what he's currently asking. Our factory with the books is now asking what we want to do for the content of the first publishing since we funded him. And we are going to do religious doctrine. So we're going to say we should take the op opportunity to treat the old, the good lady. And we also got a letter. I'm going to pronounce her name Brioni. I know some people do Bryony. But for my personal, I do Brioni. If you do say Bryony, let me know down in the comments below. I can change it for future playthroughs if it annoys you. So she's complaining that her mother... That Kevin's complaining that she's furious about the woman's trial, which I don't know why. He killed her anyways. He got what he wanted. He just maybe didn't get the same affirmation from the queen. We're going to play sports. We're going to get angry. We're going to go into lore and herbs. Herbs will be useful later in the game as well. So this is once again just talking about more of the lumens, them ruling, their killing, and the Cathry Lake will be important. Brioni will eventually want to go there, so we need to know that the place exists. And there's also beams of light that summon terrible monsters. So today is the Good Lady Festival, and we need to decide what we're going to do there. Justin saying, there may be danger, however that will not stop us, we will parade and make a speech. The best parade leader ever, except we're not. However, you can't, you can't stop that kind of confidence, that's what you need as a le leader. You know you're going to suck, but at least do it with confidence. Decoration and elegance, oh, don't worry, we'll get the public speaking part, don't worry. Oh, unfortunately, we failed public speaking as well. Now we look like an idiot to the nobles and the commoners. However, it's better than being dead. We're going to attend court. Our classes for this week are going to be medicine. And we're just going to get herbs way up there because, as I said, we're going to need that to be decently high later in the game. So now is for the Grand Ball or the Gala. All the nobles in the domain are going to be there to see you, so this is a pr decently big political situation. And get ready for a skill check failure. So they gaze upon them, the ruler of them all. Bam, 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 bam. Four failures. Nice. Feels great. We now look like idiots in front of the nobles yet again. We carry on, but they've seen you all hesitate. The first dance is going to be with our father. So he looks sad because, you know, your wife's dead, you're becoming of age, and we now have to, in a way, marry off already. Or at least that's what he wants. We don't have to. He's going to go through the list of potential partners. We don't have to follow those recommendations. We're going to do someone scandalous. So we're going to pick a ridiculous partner. We picked Julianus, the Duchess of Ursel. She's unruffled, and uh, we just start dancing with her. Unfortunately, we don't have enough dance, and we look like an idiot, and we trip while dancing yet again. Court manners, flattery, all this wonderful stuff. We are just not getting it. If you do another build, this seems pretty cool. This is Banyan. He's complimenting our lovely hostess, and this is, these are not fake words. He is happy that we got his place back in a professional way. 
Wenlin, she will become later in the importance later in the game. So this goes through some of the people who are around here. Not just Alilla. Brioni is not here. They said she's stuck at school this season. However, her parents are here, dancing together, the Duke consort clutching his duchess possessively tight. You can find out something secret about them in another playthrough. There's so much political stuff that goes on in this game, it's quite amazing. Your uncle and aunt are here, of course, it'd be scandalous if they hadn't come. So the sense magic failure was to detect a lumen in the room, however we did not do magic yet so we could not detect who that lumen is and further build on that path. We're going to attend court. We're going to do battlefield medicine and herbs. Herbs is now at 46. Battlefield will now be at 12.6. Someone is accompanying our father. Her name is Siren. She's 25. She's not old enough to be a noblewoman, but she's also not young enough. So she clearly wants something from your father. So you, you assume correctly that she's making a f move on your father. We're going to shame her with silent scorn. We're trying to back her down. Yes, with our mother's disapproving presence behind you. However, she notices your stare, but only smiles at you ever so sweetly. We failed to intimidate her, essentially. Elodie knows us, she goes, fine. We actually will not be seeing more of each other in the future. This is about the only time she exists. So don't give me that look. He's 33, she's a nice woman, nothing more. We've heard that before. Elodie's even catching on as a 14-year-old. She wants something more. She darn well knows. And that's not going to happen anytime soon. He's saying, hey, make sure that you got your back covered because there's many dangers of being a queen. You must be aware of everything around you. If you don't have intrigue, you can't have the agents option, and they are very important for certain paths in this game. I would almost always recommend having enough intrigue, which is internal affairs and all that stuff, to understand. So we are going to give our agents some direction for the upcoming weeks, and we're going to do noble plots. In order to get our achievement, make it look like an accident, we have to do noble plots. You can do the other ones, it's fine. It's just for our personal playthrough, we're going to do that. Because right now the nobles also aren't the happiest with us because we've been failing a lot of our court manners and public events. Therefore, it would not be unreasonable for someone to be plotting. We're going to play with toys. We're going to do poison and battlefield medicine. We do want to get herbs higher, that's why we have to get these other ones to at least 25. We're going to adjust the royal budget, which means we're going to either raise, keep the taxes the same, or lower them. So we're counting, we have 5,118 gold last eye. So that's not a bad amount. If we would have paid another 4,000, we only would have had 1,000 left, which is not good. We're going to raise taxes because we have enough counting to do so without the common public noticing. If the common pub public notices that we have raised taxes, we get a massive common disapproval and we would probably have a revolution on our hands. We're gonna play with toys. I'm going to stop the playthrough after this week and we will resume in part two, but for now our classes are going to be herbs and poison. Make sure you switch them, because if I did herbs first, they would have maxed and then the poison. 
With doing poison first, we hit 25, A, unlock new outfit, and B, we allow herbs to go over the 50 threshold, which we need. We were once again requested for judgment about a man convicted by strangling his wife. He's asking for a pardon to set him free. Elodie's kind of confused why she's asking for a part why he's asking for a pardon. Once again, demons made him do it. These magical beasties, they twisted my fingers into chains. This isn't the first time we've heard of demons and magic and stuff. We suspect that demons probably aren't what made him do it, but we can't sense magic, so we can either pardon, imprison, or execute. For the sake of this run through, it is best to pardon him. We think the monsters did it, and we will leave it at that. We're going to play with toys. Thank you guys for watching. This was part one. Part two is going to be right at the end of this, or you can also find it on my channel. It means a lot. If there's anything I can improve on, let me know.